everyone today in economics we are going to discuss introduction to macroeconomics our first lesson so let's go ahead so in this lesson we'll be learning how the economy functions and the basic concepts of macroeconomics so let's go with the introduction to macroeconomics the economics is classified into two branches which is called to be microeconomics and macroeconomics so what do you mean by microeconomics microeconomics means it deals with an individual it deals with a single unit whereas macroeconomics it deals with economy as a whole now microeconomics means when we speak about a individual like a tree a single tree when we speak about a single tree then it is called to be microeconomics whereas when we speak many trees in the forest okay so that you call it as macroeconomics or when we speak about an individual a single individual then it is called to be microeconomics when we speak about a country a nation then it is called to be macroeconomics so Na ragnar frisk a norwegian economist and the co recipient of first nobel prize in economic science was a person who has coined this microeconomics and macroeconomics so micro means small and macro means large in which year in the year 1933 so macroeconomics in its modern form was prepared by john maynard keynes in his book the general theory of employment interest and money which was published in the year 1936 now keynes was the first person to give an explanation for the fallout for the great depression when the goods remained unsold and workers unemployed so he gave the solution for great depression so he is also considered to be the father of macroeconomics let's learn the meaning of macroeconomics the word macro is derived from the greek word makros which means large now macroeconomics as we know it is a study about the entire economy economy as a whole so it deals with national income employment and output because it deals with the large economy deals with economy as a whole it is also called to be income theory because it covers the matters of national income inflation business cycle poverty inequality etc what are the importance of macroeconomics macroeconomics helps us to understand the functioning of the economy at the aggregate level what is aggregate level it means the whole level which helps to the solve the basic problems which is prevailing in the economy it helps to understand the future problem needs and challenges of an economy it is used to scientific investigations to understand the reality it is also used for comparison to analyze the economic indicators for a better predictions and about the future so macroeconomics as we know that it deals as a economy as a whole it is used for a betterment for the future it helps us to predict about our future so let's learn about the scope of macroeconomics so first of all it covers various areas in the economy it has a wide scope for macroeconomics so first point is national income so it helps to compensate 
to provide a long term understanding of the growth progress in an economy. So, it helps to understand the process of development in an economy. As we know that national income is plays a vital role for macroeconomics. Next one is business cycle. See almost economies faces various problems in the business fluctuations in the business cycle. The cyclical moments you might have known about boom, recession, depressions and recovery. So, in this stage the economy needs to be very carefully studied based on the economic aggregate variables. The next one is poverty and unemployment. So, the major problems of the most rich nations are poverty and unemployment. So, this is one of the economics paradoxes. So, here we can see that the poverty and unemployment facilitates allocation of resources, how the resources has to be allocated. So, it deals with initiating uh, corrective measures for the macroeconomics. The next point is economic growth. The growth and development of an economy and the factor determining them could be understood only through macroeconomic analysis. So, only when we deal with macroeconomic analysis, we know about the, we will be knowing about the economic growth and its development. So, economic policies which is our last point, macroeconomics helps to make macroeconomic policies. So, economic policy will help us to solve basic problems, uh, to overcome obstacles and to achieve growth in the economy. Let us learn the limitations of macroeconomics. The first point is there is a danger of excessive generalization of the economy as a whole. It means for example, if an individual withdraws his deposit from the bank, there is no harm in it. But if the same, if all the persons rushes to withdraw deposits, the bank would perhaps collapse. So, when we see for the entire economy, it is quite danger. The second point is, it assumes homogeneity among individual unit. So, homogeneous expectation is an assumption in the modern portfolio theory that all investors expect the same and make identical choices in a given situation. The third one is fallacy of composition. What is good for an individual need not be good for nation and vice versa. And what is good for a country is not good for another country and another time. The fourth one is non-economic factor. Non-economic factor determines like economic activities, but they do not find place in the macroeconomics. So, these are the limitations of macroeconomics. So, this is explained with the help of a flow chart. So, in an economy, the fundamental activities are production and consumption. So, these two activities are ultimately help to provide uh, economic growth. The exchange activity supports both production and consumption. So, it is influenced by economic activity and non-economic activity. So, let us learn about economic activities. Economic activities are those which is included in the form of uh, transportation, banking, advertising, etc. Huh? And non-economic activities are health, uh, education, governance, which is regulated by government. So, in these two, uh, addition to these, there are some external activities such as from uh, export, uh, import, 
international relations emigrations migration foreign exchange all these are the functions of an economy now let's learn the meaning of economy so according to ag brown who is an economist has defined economy it's a system by which people can earn their living so it means an economy is a cooperation by producer and worker to make goods and services that satisfy the human wants or the wants of the consumer which was also given by j r hicks so the main aim of this economy is to achieve economic growth both by economic activity and non economic activity and also external activities the economies can be classified into different uh, types of economy based on a development so it helps to understand whether the economy is developed underdeveloped or developing economies next one is system of activities so it helps us understand whether the economy is related with capitalist economy socialist economy or mixed economy the next one is scale of activities so scale of activities whether it is small activity or large scale activity fourth one is nature of functioning whether it is standard static or dynamic economies the next one is nature of operation so it uh, helps us to know whether it is closed economy or open economy which is regulated within the country the next one is nature of advancement advancement it is like uh, whether it is followed with traditional economic system or modern economic system the last one is national income so it helps understand the level of national income whether it is uh, modern uh, low income uh, high income or middle income <music>